Hi everyone, it's Alex from Risk Academy and today I wanted to again talk about risk management training. Um, it's, it's an important topic, uh, a lot of offers in the market and some of the scariest things I, ca I, I hear when I have to do risk management training for different clients all over the world is that how come we have been in two or three or five or seven or fifteen different trainings up to now and nobody has ever told us what you Alex are, are saying and the um, the choice is, is obviously very easy to make it's either everybody before me was wrong or Alex is crazy um, but both scenarios are quite plausible and uh, in fact it's actually much easier to believe a single person is crazy and saying something insane as opposed to believe that your five, four, seven or fifteen previous uh, risk consultants have told you the wrong thing all along. Um, so avoid, basically, avoid the disappointment. Uh, choose your risk management, uh, risk management carefully. There are few things that have to be included in every single risk management training. If uh, your service provider does not do that, you know, don't get them engaged. It's a waste of your time. You'll you'll eventually be disappointed a anyway. Um, and how I know you will be disappointed is because every single risk management training, I actually start by challenging. And sorry, this is a little aside. I will come back to the three or four things you must have in a training. But I do want to share that story. Um, every single training, I start with uh, challenges. So start with questions. Well, why isn't your CEO calling you? when he is about to make an important decision why do business units before sign off on the, before they sign off on the budget or a project why don't they approach risk management and request you to give them some insights and inputs um, why major contracts are signed without the proper input from risk management i mean you may have integrated into that process and wonderful um, but why do people why do decision makers do not want themselves to get risk management involved in the first place. Why don't they invite us to the table uh, when important things happen? Because risk is taken at the time of making decision. There's no point talking about risks every quarter once all the decisions have been made and the budgets and the strategies and the investment projects have been signed off. You just basically, you're just reiterating everything that's been already done and, and probably absorbed by the company. So here's, you know, I start with all those challenges and every single time the situation is exactly the same everybody is there's, there's this internal feeling of disappointment in risk profession because they they feel underappreciated because nobody really does invite them and again if somebody invites you you are an exception well done to you but the majority of the people i speak to they they really can relate to those challenges of saying well um, no, nobody reads our risk management framework, even though we've designed it for everybody in the organization, but somehow only risk manager and internal auditor wants to read them. So what's, what's wrong? What is not right? Why is, why is your risk appetite statement is not laminated for every single board mem member? Why don't they use it every time they make an important decision? Um, why is your mitigation plans, why do you have to chase people? To check whether they've done the mitigation plans why it's not part of their just normal day-to-day -day strategy so there's a lot of questions that um, you know brave risk managers actually ask themselves and get to a very disappointing conclusion that maybe something's not right in risk management and then many risk managers choose to close their eyes and, and ignore the fact that they're just doing absolute shit and uh, nobody's benefiting in any way in the company except themselves um, but they're probably deep inside they're unhappy either um, so I start with those questions and the answer is always the same again based on the um, you know few hundred courses that I have run um, is always the same is that something's not just something just doesn't feel right and that I think is the challenge partially and the responsibility partially of all the consultants and the institutes that teach us the wrong things about risk management so here are a few things that must be included in risk management course and if they're not avoid those courses like plague first one um, risk management is all about decision making so it has to include the theory on how the decision making has evolved what is decision quality 
Um, how do you integrate into decision making? I'll talk about integration separately. So it has to have an element of decision making. You know, a training that teaches you how to identify, uh, assess and mitigate risks is a complete waste of time because that's not how business works. Um, sitting down and discussing risks for the sake of risks is insanity. You should be discussing risks only in the context of decisions or achieving objectives, usually decisions designed to help achieve objectives, or in the context of some sort of business process within the organization. So that's number one. Number two, risk management has a lot to do with the way humans interact, um, think, and make decisions. So a must, an absolute must, a comp uh, must have competency is what scientists call risk perception. Google risk perception, there's a whole Wikipedia page on that and it's all about cognitive biases and the research since 1970s that has won two Nobel Prize in economics now. The research that suggests that the way people talk about risks is not what, what, actually, what they actually think. And in fact, whatever people tell you in your risk workshop is probably not going to be true because most of the qualitative risk analysis tools are designed with complete ignorance of how humans actually think and, and uh, perceive risk. So there has to be a big element on cognitive biases and risk perception. Every single risk manager absolutely must know that um, to understand how to interact. Why, why, for example, having a risk workshop before lunchtime is stupid. You have zero chance of switching on system two thinking because there's not enough glucose in the uh, in the participants blood so there's not enough energy to go to the brain so the brain is physically unable to switch on system two thinking and basically you, all you will get is just shortcuts and um, you know get lost answer type answers instead of proper proper risk discussions and also understand why it's actually unnatural for humans to discuss risks to mitigate risks to properly assess likelihood and consequence I mean Humans are just so unreliable when you're asking them to assess likelihood and consequence that you might as well ignore everything they tell you in the, in the workshop. So that's number two. Huge element of uh, um, any risk management training, risk perception. Third, risk management, since uh, the qualitative tools are so subjective and so immature and so unreliable, there are proper tools. And literally those tools are Decision trees, scenario analysis, sensitivity analysis, Monte Carlo simulations, and some scoring models. These are the five most commonly used tools for risk management. I'm sure there are more. And in fact, if you think there's a better way or if there's another one, please write underneath this video. I want to, I want to hear, but these are the ones I'm using. And these are the five that every single risk manager must know. And what do I find out? Literally the first question I ask, when I walk into a, a risk management uh, course, how many of you have corporate finance background? No one. How many of you understand the basic statistics? Minimal. How many of you have worked in Excel extensively so you know how NPV, IRR is calculated, how budgets look? Can you disseminate and analyze an investment project model or a project schedule? Very few people can. Um, and that is just, that is horrible. Literally, this, the very second they say, we have no corporate finance background, there's nothing. There's nothing you can teach them about risk management. Uh, the outcome of, of, uh, of my risk management courses is, here's everything you need to know. Here's how you integrate it into decision making. Here's everything you need to know about risk perception. Now go and learn statistics and corporate finance. Because without it, you will not be able to integrate into strategic planning. There's no way. You will not be able to integrate into investment management. You will not be able to integrate even into uh, procurement. So th number three, proper risk modeling and scenario analysis tools. And uh, number four, a must have in risk management training is somebody who actually understands the industry because all your SAM, all your examples, all your case studies have to be driven by industry specific things. So for example, I refuse to do some of the training courses because I, I've never worked in a particular, particular industry, but luckily in Russia I have a whole group of trainers that we send depending on what industry the risk management training is happening. But the first three things are absolutely critical. Decision making, cognitive biases, risk modeling tool, industrial experience and sorry finally integration integration 
is a huge mental shift. I mean, I have even started drawing pictures and I'll publish those pictures very soon because I feel they're amazing. They're all literally risk management one and risk management two. Risk management one is having risk management policy, risk management framework, risk appetite statements, risk owners, coordinators, mitigation plans, risk registers, risk reports, um, what, what else? Risk criteria and all the other stupid things that actually have nothing to do with risk management. Risk management two is none of those things. Well, when I say that, to me, that actually means a lot. Like, I've actually written a book that is 100 pages, where it, and it's free, so, you know, go ahead and read it, don't be lazy. Um, I have described, for every single point that I've just said, I've actually described a better alternative. So, to me, this actually means a lot. But when I say that to a general risk practitioner, he just goes, what? No risk framework? But what else? No risk registers, no risk reports. That's insanity to them. They just doesn't doesn't comprehend. And the reality is 99% of the risk management training providers in the world also don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. Well, what is better than having a risk report? Why you should never have a risk management framework? Why you shouldn't have a risk register? What is the better way for all of those things? So that's, that's a lot of questions that need to be answered in risk management, risk management training. So if you want to select a good risk management provider, just ask them. What is risk appetite and how is, what's the best way to structure it? And if somebody gives you an answer uh, about the actual risk appetite, rather than saying it's a stupid concept and there's a better way of doing it, then you probably shouldn't engage that person in training. Good luck finding your good risk management trainer.